Welcome to the e-technology post review, aka the e-technology performance review, or the e-taper. I'm probably going to end up calling it the e-taper or the e-taper. Basically, whatever I call it, it is the second written task in the semester. It ties in closely with the technology engagement analysis, and it's all about the what happened. From the outset, you should know that at 20%, Objectively, it is harder than the ePortfolio. Subjectively, it's harder than the ePortfolio. How it works is that in the Word document, you will find the depth technical details, including the marking rubrics and the marking guides. There'll also be some very close quarters instruction. I'm going to ask you to read that, watch this, check out the PowerPoint slides if you need to, and if you've got any more questions, please hit us up on the forum. It is probably the one area where I think there's the most opportunity for us to have a conversation about what my expectations are and how well you feel that you can reach them. It is backed by the Last Chance Salon. Uh, if you have a bad run on this task, you can resubmit. We'll grade this, I will turn this around to you as fast as I can to give you a chance to action any feedback I have. If you bank below a distinction, again, if you are looking at a pass conceded, a PX, a pass or a credit, you will have the last chance salon, second chance. There is another, and that is the power play. If you have banked a distinction or higher on both tasks, you have the opportunity to go in for a third task. The power play is here because when I first offered the resubmission chances, I had a number of my distinction and high distinction students complain that they were missing out on the opportunity to action feedback. And we came up with the idea of one of the power play where you could go for up to 10 more marks to take your combined assessment two and assessment three score to a maximum of 40 points. Now, the forum thread, please make use of it. Um, my, from the outset, I will say this is the one assessment task I have the most concern about people looking at and going, ah, oh, 20 marks coast that in and then getting to it and going, oh God, this is hell. So I'd rather not have that happen. It is positioned, I keep, you'll keep seeing me put it in week 11 on the way through here. It's because I want it to really crest at week 11 so that week 12 submission is much easier. It's in the bag. Also because I don't want there to be extensions because I won't have time. I want this to be as tight as close to 100% on the due date as we can do. Final definite uh, confirmed submission date will be the date on Wattle. 2,000 words again, same length as the first round. Difficulty level, well higher. Four parts, two parts need theory, and those two parts are absolutely informed by the evidence from experience of parts one and part two. Why this is different, and why this is difficult is that you are your case study. Your experience of this semester, your learning from doing, the learning from engaging in the live project that you set up in the first written submission and that plan that you laid out and the way in which you went about chasing down the goals in that plan, that drives this task. So it's not just the 2,000 words, it's all the weeks leading up to it. It's everything you've posted, presented, created, made, all that experiential learning crests here in 2000 words. So your first challenge is that if you're not used to yourself as the data set, you are a source. If you don't put the yards in during the season, then your end of season is going to be hellish. 
you'll need to do the project. You'll need to run the project. You'll need to follow through on the plan you wrote for yourself. And part of that is that you need to pursue that goal that you set out for yourself. The second thing is that in parts three and four, you're still informed by your practice and what you happened to you and what you experienced. You layer on. How can you explain that with theory, with marketing language, with concepts and ideas from the journal articles and the textbooks and the literature? Now, we are going to train to that. We are going to teach you that. I have set up at the end of each of the on-demand lectures a walkthrough of a journal paper to explain how to extract a single idea and to show you that you can just take a single idea and use that idea to validate something in your experience and in your project. This is not easy and this is why we're doing it. We're doing it because it's hard. And the big one, this is the biggest thing, is that this 2,000 word paper is functionally four different essay types on the same narrative core. The project recap is subjective. It is evaluative and it is about your lived experience. Did you reach that overall reason you had for doing your project? Did you get the value you sought to attain? Your second one is what was it like to pursue that goal through your metrics and your objectives? How was it to take a plan that was a theoretical assignment and make it a reality? How close did you get? How well did it go? That can only be informed by you going off and doing the project. You cannot answer one and two unless you have done the project. And to make it even better, part three draws on both those elements and ask you to tell the story of what it was like to be the user of that platform in the pursuit of this project, what theoretical marketing explanation can help you explain to another what it was like to run a project on that platform in marketing language. And then we wrap it around and go, okay, retrospective, introspective, documentation, analytical, projective. Now, having experienced what you've experienced, Go write some advice for another marketer. Tell someone else how you would do it. Based on your experience, based on your knowledge, backed up by marketing theory, tell your week two self what they needed to know that you know now, but you didn't know then. Guide your past self. Four different focal lengths, four different focal points. Two are theory heavy, two are experience heavy, and all four are utterly codependent on you delivering your project throughout the It's freaking brilliant, and I absolutely love it, and it is one of the most glorious things to mark. And it's so nice to see. And it is driven by the ability to document and to analyze and to extrapolate from experience in to practice through support from theory and support from insight. And it's the difference between screwing around and science. We're gonna science, we're gonna write things down. It's also really, as far as our work integrated experience goes, this is one of those work skills that's utterly valuable. Being able to look back on what's just happened and go, all right, how are we gonna explain that? But how can we find something to extrapolate on and use to drive, this is the evidence we have collected from living the life we've lived. How can we also see whether that's an anomaly or something that can be extrapolated into the next plan, the next practice, the next outcome? So you are going to directly write up those four areas we've talked about. Your actions from go to submission drive your data, your data. And it's why the first assignment has a Gantt chart or a visualization, why you have metrics, why you have, why your goals need to be specific so you know whether you got there, why you need to be able to measure them so you can say, what was it like? Did we make it? Did we get to what we set out to do? Why you want to have them attainable because it's easier to tell the story of, damn, I got there, versus, Okay, they were not, there was nothing real about what I set out to do. And that is your project recap. That's your first question. What did you set out to do? What did you achieve? And did you 
What did you learn from the experience? And did you get what you came for? You set yourself a goal. You said, I want, and that's the thing. Is I'm going to ask you in that first assignment to set, I want, and I want to hear from you in this project recap of, did you get? The plans versus performance. Now, there is more detail on the Word document. You've got to read the Word document. This is the summary overview. The Word doc's got the details. That's where I park the devil. You need to use that to go with it. But your second thing, your plans versus performance. This is very much about, did you get to achieve what you set out to do? And did the system enable it? Did the system help? Did the processes that you use? So. I set out to create a YouTube channel and yeah, YouTube's been really functionally successful for me because it's distributed my files and that's what I want. That's what I came here for. These videos are being distributed to you from platforms and they are meeting those goals. But what you're also looking for in here is going back to your original, going looking at your document and going, what was it like? What was that experience? I gave myself a task. How was it to try and chase my own dream? And did the platform make it easier or did the platform make it harder? Round three. This is where you have a big risk scenario of coming back to me and going, don't get it. Section two and section three are the same. They are not. If they were the same, it would be 1,000 words and one section. Two sets of 500 words and two sections. Plans and performance talks about whether the technology helped you get to your goals. User experience is how did you, as the person using the platform, go, how can you explain your experience? Did you co-create value? If you did, how? Talk to me as a marketer. Talk to me about your experience through marketing language. You need references. You will need to go back to theory. You will need to go beyond the theory of that's just in e-marketing. You've got to do your own secondary research here, friends, because you've experienced it. But there is a language. There is identity, self-perception, consumer behavior, co-creation of value. There are a bunch of different ways in which you can be explaining how a consumer consumes a product. And what you're going to do here is explain how you, the consumer, consume this product, and the product is the platform you were using. What explains what I did? What explains how I did? What explains my interaction? So if you are using Instagram for the semester, you are a customer of Instagrams, you wanna talk about how you engage with Instagram and what marketing theory describes what happened. Here, you are pivoting the way in which you are presenting the material. For these 500 words, you are advising another but you are still drawing on marketing and marketing theory. Imagine you're writing a 500 word cited and referenced essay that you're sending back to your past self in week two as this is what you can do with the platform. Now, this is the, if I'd known this in hindsight, well, this is the hindsight projector. You are going to go tell the story of what can you do with this platform based on your experience and what marketing theory and references and other material about the platform, about marketing, about your gut, tells the story of how you could make use of this. More detail on the Word document, but basically if you look at a platform and go, there's a marketing opportunity here. Now if, I, if my past self knew this, what would I want them to know? So scoring, uh, cascade weighting. It gets bigger, meaner, heavier, and way more challengingly fun. I mentioned these earlier, I'll just quickly repeat. If it goes pear-shaped for you, you will get feedback, we will support you, we will help you. I want you to face this, but I want you to face this knowing that we got you back. Uh, if you get knocked down by the project, we will come in, dust you off, and we will talk about, okay, here's a technique we recommend. I'm not gonna ask you what did you do wrong, I'm gonna say what went right, what can we do to support you? Uh, if you have succeeded and you want to go after the title shots, the title belt will be on the line for the power play where you go hunt for the additional. That's the elite. There is a recovery mode and then there's a stretch mode. As always, you need me, you know where to find me. And same deal with all the other things. If you've got a question, put it up in the thread and participation and engagement marks. You send it to me on the private, I'll give you the answer and then I'll go share it with the community. And with that, mates, that is your running guide for 
what to expect in the second written task. And it is subject to feedback, iteration, and upgrades. If you ask questions and we make changes, we will make iterations and make changes to slide content, to Word documents, and maybe even to the video. Otherwise, see you at the seminars.